Find the power series centered at c equals 2 for this function and also we're being asked to find the interval of convergence. This is a really, really nice problem solution. So the formula we're going to use is this one. If you have 1 over 1 minus x, this is equal to the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of x to the n. And this is true if x is between 1 and negative 1. Now another way to state this condition is to say that the absolute value of x is less than 1. So either of those is fine. This is basically the geometric series um, test, or rather, this is a geometric series, rather. And recall that this diverges, before we go further, just recall it diverges if the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 1. So this equality is not true in this case. In particular, it diverges if the absolute value of x is equal to 1. So that means it diverges if x is equal to plus or minus 1. Those are the endpoints. So this diverges at the endpoints. So that's, that's what matters for us in this problem. So this diverges at the endpoints. So why am I going through this? Um, we're, ha we're asked to find the interval of convergence, and when we do, we don't have to check the endpoints because we're using this to find the interval, and we know that this diverges at the endpoints. So whenever you use uh, a geometric series to find your interval of convergence, don't worry about checking the endpoints because it always diverges there. Okay, let's do this problem carefully. So this is f of x equals, and what do we want? We want a power series centered at 2. So we want something that has an x minus 2 in it. Right? We, want, we want x minus 2 here instead of x. So first, maybe let's interchange the 3x and the 2. So this is 7 over 2 plus 3x. Right, that's called progress. Good. So at least we have the x where we want it. So this is the key step. So this is 7 over... Now again, what do we want? We want x minus 2. Let me use a different color. All right, that's what we want. So let's just write it down. Just write down what you want. That's the secret to success <laughs> in these problems. So we wrote down x minus 2. And it's going to be in parentheses right because it's going to be multiplied by 3 we have no choice there right so we have to put the 3 there so so far so good we have 3x right no problems there the problem here is that we have a negative 6 right we have a negative 6 but we want a positive 2 right so we have a negative 6 but we need a 2 so how do you get from negative 6 to 2 well you add 8 so 8. Clever, 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 clever. That's why I love these problems. Uh, if that didn't make sense, just rewind it. I think I hopefully did it slow enough. Okay, let's keep going. You'll notice that there's a 1 here, but we have an 8. So let's pull it out. So this is 7 over 8 times 1 over, well, we factored out an 8. So here we get 1 plus, we factored out an 8 from the 3. So we get 3 over 8, x minus 2. Okay, almost there. We need to have a minus sign. We don't have that, right? So we can put it there and fix it. So this is 7 over 8. Fun stuff. I love these problems. All divided by 1 minus, and then I'm going to use a bracket, minus 3 over 8, x minus 2, bracket. Okay, so... Uh, going from here to here in one step, wow, if you can do it, uh, <laughs> you're really smart. I can't. Um, hopefully, that made some sense. All right, now this is going to be equal to 7 over 8. And all of this, we're just going to use the formula. So we're just going to replace this with this, right? That's going to be our x. So it's the sum as n runs from 0 to infinity. And this whole thing here is being raised to the nth power. So this is negative 3 eighths. Beautiful stuff. x minus 2 to the nth power. All right, This equality is true 
as long as our x is less than 1. So as long as this is less than 1. Um, so if the absolute value of negative 3 eighths x minus 2 is less than 1. Or in other words, if it's between negative 1 and 1. Now whenever you take the absolute value, the negative goes away. So we get um, 3 eighths. I'll keep the absolute value there for a sec. x minus 2 less than 1. So that's that's when this equation is true. We're going to use this to find the interval of convergence, but let's go ahead and finish what we have here. All right, so this is equal to 7 eighths sum as n equals 0 as n goes from 0 to infinity and then we're let's see, we're going to have negative 1 to the n because of the negative. Then we're going to have 3 to the n and then we're going to have 8 to the n. Now uh, there's some messy algebra there, uh, but if you've done the ratio test, you've, you've seen this before. And this is x minus 2 to the n. Uh, and I think that's good. I mean, I guess you could combine the 8 with 8 to the n. Let's go ahead and do that. So this is the sum as n runs from 0 to infinity. 7 times negative 1 to the n, 3 to the n, all over uh, 8 to the n plus 1, right? Because we have a 1 here, and when you add it to n, you get n plus 1, and then x minus 2 to the n. So there's our power series uh, centered at, uh, I believe it was 2. I hope it was 2. I thought the problem said 3. No, it said 2. Okay, 2. It looks a little weird to me. Okay, um, so that's the answer. Now we just have to find the interval of convergence. So again, that comes from this. So this means that 3 eighths x minus 2 is less than 1 and greater than negative 1. So multiply everything by 8 thirds. So we get this. All right, 8 thirds. And then we just have to add 2 to every side. So when you add 2 to every side, you get 2 minus 8 thirds less than x, less than 8 thirds plus 2. Think of 2 as 6 thirds. So this is 6 thirds minus 8 thirds less than x, less than 8 thirds, it's a lot of thirds, <laughs> plus 6 thirds, uh, 6 minus 8 is negative 2 thirds, less than x, less than 14 thirds. So the interval of convergence is negative 2 thirds, comma, 14 thirds. And we don't have to check the endpoints because we used a geometric series to do this, and it always diverges at the endpoints if you use a geometric series. So I hope this helps. Uh, I think it was kind of rushed, but hopefully someone out there who's who's working on this can get some use out of this example. I think the the most interesting part of the entire problem is is right here. Right, this is it. This is where the magic. This is where the magic happens. Right, that that's it right there. Another another interesting thing in the problem is that. You know, we use the geometric series test, and whenever you use that, uh, it diverges at the endpoints. So you don't need to go through the whole checking of the endpoints using all the series tests. Just diverges at the endpoints. Done. Uh, I hope this helps.